Hello and welcome to a very special edition to TV Unleashed. I'm Sammy and filling in for Mandy is my friend James. Thank you for being on the show today. How's it going, Sammy? Long time. I know. It's been a very long time and it's, it's amazing that we're talking about Slight because that's actually how we met. Yes. Actually, I was just looking at the picture the other day of me sitting at uh, Gus's desk with my feet up on it. Yeah, that was in 2010. We went on a set visit for the Born Identity episode, and I'm in that episode for a total of five seconds, and my mother noticed it before I did. She's like, that kind of looks like you, and that kind of looks like the bag I lent you, and I'm like, oh, look, it's me. <laughs> I could cross being off on TV off my bucket list. But, you yeah. just need an IMDb credit. Right? Yeah, but I don't think they even realized I was on there, so I don't think that really would count for much at this point. But, yeah, Psych has been off the air for about three years now, and I was in mourning for it because that was my favorite show ever. But tomorrow they're premiering the new movie. And have what have you heard about the movie, James? Um, well, I, I heard that it's going to... Well, bring the cast back, first of all. But I've also heard that it's... Um, it's going to answer some questions that were left at the end of the season and uh, end of the series. So we will see. Yes. Now I've been following this to the letter and it's been absolutely amazing. And I have my predictions and I want to hear what you think is going to happen because obviously we all know at the end and spoiler alert, if nobody knows, but too bad it's been three years. Um, I was Romeo. Um, Sean and Juliet get engaged at the end of the series, and their engagement ring gets stolen. So, and we pick up three years after this happened. So, what do you think is going to happen? Well, we're going to find out, and this is all speculation. I'm, I'm not giving any spoilers away. This is all speculation. We're going to find out that they didn't get married. That Sean and Gus finally admitted their feelings for each other. And they've been living in a bungalow on Long Beach. So that, that, that's what I'm thinking. I like that theory because everyone's been saying Sean and Gus have more chemistry than Juliet and <laughs> Sean and Gus and, well, any girl he's really been with on the show. So that would be an interesting theory. I like that theory. And I don't think they're going to be married either. I think that they broke up and they're going to have to deal with that awkwardness of working together because... Again, in the series finale, they all move to um, San, San Francisco, so Juliet and the Chief can take on new jobs, their partners, and yeah, I think Juliet's going to continue her independent woman streak, and Sean is going to be alone and trying to still be a big psychic detective, and thus he's just going to be running around screaming after he gets scared at something. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but... Every woman Gus ever dated tried to kill him, right? Is that how that went? Not every woman, but every woman he dated was a psycho. Hey, we have something in common. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let your wife hear you say that. <laughs> She's a psycho, too. And what, do you mean a psycho isn't a psycho-psycho? Or psycho isn't what they call the psych fans? Because there's a difference. Uh, no, a psych... A psycho as in a psycho. We have to keep knives away from her. <laughs> Mary, <laughs> watching, I'm so sorry for your, what your husband is saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to say these things. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And what else do you think is going to happen in a movie? Because um, rumor has it and... Um, that last year, Tim Amundsen's not going to be in a lot of the movie because, unfortunately, he suffered a stroke right before filming. But thankfully, I got word that he's okay. He's tweeting. He's happy. But I'm wondering how they're going to write him into the story since they had to cut a lot of what he had. Um, I don't know. I'd actually, I hadn't heard he had a stroke. I mean, my heart goes out to him and his family and friends. Um, just, wow. That, that's a complete shock. Yeah. It's, wow, you've left me speechless. That's a first. This guy's never speechless, you guys. He's <laughs> going. I, he, I, the fact that I rendered him speechless is a miracle. But my theory is um, because um, in the tagline of the movie or the description of the movie, they keep saying, 
that they go after one of their own. So my th theory is someone goes after Lasseter and he's going to be in a coma for most of the movie. That's my theory at any rate. And that would be a good way to have him in a movie without having him in a movie. You know what I mean? Yes. Now, um, what they could also do now, if it doesn't deal with Lasseter, I, I forget the character's name. There was that one nerdy cop. McNabb. Yes. He goes bad. And they have to hunt him down. No, don't say that. I love McNabb. He was my favorite. No, he can't be. <laughs> Unless they go after McNabb. That's a theory, too. There's so many theories, but have you seen the pictures? There are. Yeah, have you seen the pictures for the movie? Because it looks like that Henry becomes a hipster. And some of the pictures I've seen on Twitter and social media. So I'm really curious to see what that's all about. That would be funny. Hey, do you remember playing at his bar in his in his apartment? Yes. <laughs> Pretending we were mixing drinks. Oh yeah, pineapples and you know, I have pineapple all over my apartment because thanks to Psyche, which has always has a hidden pineapple in there, I've become obsessed with pineapples too. I don't know about you, but I always have to have something pineapple wherever I go. I actually got yelled at for not buying a pineapple today for this. Are you serious? Mar Mary said, you didn't get a pineapple? It's like, ah, oh, I thought about it. <laughs> we'll have one on Friday show because Friday we're going to be discussing the movie and seeing who's right, who's wrong with everything that we have been predicting with this. Yes. I'm, I'm actually excited about it. It's nice to see a show come back that's been off the air for a little while. And fortunately, it's not one of these really, you know, big gaps. Because sometimes you get shows that they go off the air and then they're off the air for 10 years and they bring them back and you have no clue what the hell happened 10 years ago. But with it only being three years and the fact that Psych is actually in reruns on ION, you know, people still have Psych on the brain. Exactly. And what I've been hearing is that it's one of those shows that you can watch with the whole family. And thanks to those reruns, we've been getting a ton of new fans, younger fans, the next, I guess, like the next generation, if you will. So I'm curious to see if the families are going to be watching and tuning in and getting all their pineapple snacks and all watching together. Well, I'm sure I'll be watching it with my cats. So, you know. Are your cat psychos too? Uh, in their own right, yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, going back to Psych a little bit, what are some of your favorite episodes of the show? I mean, you know I'm obsessed with it, but I want to hear what some of your favorite episodes are. The Twin Peaks episode has to be my absolute favorite. I, I'm a big Twin Peaks fan, although the revival they did on Showtime – I got three episodes in and was like, what the hell is going on? And I gave up, completely quit. But the Twin Peaks episode's my favorite. Of course, the episode that we were there for filming, I mean, you have to love that. I mean, that's that's got to be on the, the top ten list. So, um, I'm trying to think there was, there was one, oh, man. Gus was absolutely in love with this girl, and Sean was trying everything to sabotage it. And I, I honestly can't think of the actual plot of the episode, but the girl was absolutely gorgeous. She was crazy, though. But uh, <laughs> Of course she was crazy. It's Gus. I know. I feel so bad for him. I mean, Dulé Hill is such a great guy. And, I mean, you, you'd think they could have just thrown him a bone and given him, like, one normal girl. Well, maybe that's what the movie's for. Maybe in the movie he'll finally have a woman. Or maybe in the movie he's the one that's married and not Sean and Juliet. That's possible. That's possible. We don't know. Or maybe we do know and we're just not saying. That's true. Oh, I'm trying to think of the episode that you're talking about because there's so many episodes where um, Gus has a psycho girlfriend. There's the one where Kerry Washington was in where he was married to the girl after getting drunk. There was the um, crazy girl that was jumping out of planes and going whitewater rafting. There was a the girl that had... That's her. That was her. That's, that's the episode. She's a killer. 
they killed a guy on the camping trip, didn't they, in that episode? I think so, yes, yes, yes. That's the episode. Yes. That was um, seven season seven, I believe, right? Wow. Um, hey, you. I trust you. you. You know Psych like I know Star Trek, so. No, you're talking about Tuesday to 17th, right? Where he was dating. I don't know. There's so many girls that he dated that were psycho where they went <laughs> camping. Because there was the one where they went camping where they went back to the campsite they went to when they were little. Then there was the girl that was actually played by um, the girl that was in Fairly Legal that was um, the um, whitewater rafting girl. Then there was a the Blair Witch girl. So there's so many episodes where she. Are you talking uh, Sarah Shahai? Yes. Okay. Yep, she was in that episode too. So I don't know. There's so many different, so many different psychos that Gus stated that he could fit in with us. <laughs> I just, I, I just feel so bad for him. He is just, he's a character that you just you feel for. I mean, it's just because nothing ever seems to go right for him. He had his great job as a you know a drug rep, making money. And then his friend just screws up his entire life, and then he never can find a woman. I mean, just the poor guy. Yeah, he has, like, really bad luck, and it really makes me sad. And, but at least he kept the pharmaceutical job through most of the series. It was just everything yeah. kept getting messed up because he kept going on these fake psychic detective adventures, which I think was a way to bring him out of his shell, so he wasn't such a hard ass. But still, you know, having a friend like Sean... I don't know how I would deal with that in real life. Now, Sean's a destroyer. Sean's the guy that you bring into your life and he just screws everything up. Or that guy you meet at the bar that is, like, dancing and, you know, you can't calm him down after last call and you just have to be like, okay, honey, let's move it along. So you're remembering that last press tour we were on that you had to drag me off the dance floor. Okay, I see. <laughs> I had to be dragged. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, it's just like he's just. But you can't help but love him because he is. He has good intentions. He just doesn't think things through. Well, I don't know. I just. I actually feel bad for Juliet because she fell in love with him. Yeah, but it's always the least expected people that fall in love. I mean, I'm sure we've both been there. We fall in love with the people we least expect to, but I think they balance Yeah, I, I'm, well. I'm living proof of that, so. Fair enough, you and me both, but I think that, again, they balance each other out because in the beginning, Juliet was very tough, very, I don't want to say, well, maybe tough's not the right word, but she was very into her job and nothing else mattered except for, you know, becoming the best cop she could be. And then Sean, she was focused. Thank you. There you go. That's the word I'm looking for. And then she kind of let her out of her shell. And then they finally started dating. And although I did like her with that one dude that she was with, um, Declan, I thought he was good for her. Now, do you think because she was so focused about being a cop, that if Sean wouldn't have come into the picture, she would have wound up with Lassiter? No, 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 no. I don't think so. He was focused. He was very, you know, gung-ho, as it were. But they tried that with Lassiter, remember? And it didn't work out when he was dating his partner. And then we would have lost one, either one or the other. And we couldn't have a show, we couldn't have a show without either of them. Mm, true. Yes, and actually a little bit of trivia that well, for Copper in the pilot episode was in Covert Affairs. Okay, which like one? the blonde that wasn't Annie, the other blonde. And it's other blonde wasn't in Annie. In an episode of Covert, and I'm forgetting her name, of course. Okay. And of course, you know, because she wasn't Annie, I don't remember her. <laughs> I give you that. Are you talking to Annie's sister? Maybe, yeah. The one who had the kids. I think. I think so. Ah. Siri, who played, um, who was in Covert Affairs? I found Covert Affairs. Okay, let's look it up. Let's go to the videotape. Oh, my God, do you remember Warner Wolf with the, let's go to the videotape? You're from New York. Yes, I do remember Warner Wolf. 
Yeah, when I was doing one of my internships in college, I actually got to meet him. Wow. Yeah, he was quite a guy. He was quite a guy. So shout out to New York and shout out to Warner Wolf. So let's see. Do, 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 do. It wasn't Joan. There was Annie Duddick. She played. Who did she play? Oh, where were we without technology, James? I would like to notice. I don't know. We'd be looking stuff up in books. You mean like encyclopedias? Yes. Do you remember when we they used to we having to go to the library and they had twenty six more than twenty six they had it like divided like A A to A C and then you had to go through like a million books. Yes, I remember that. I remember, you know, being in high school and having to use books to look things up. That was my Google growing up. So. Oh hell yeah, me too. It was crazy. Uh, she played Danielle Brooks. And her name in real life is Ann Duddick. Okay. Yeah, and she was the very first partner Lassiter had. And they were apparently having an affair. And she got transferred and Juliet came in. It's, it's honestly, it's never good when you have an affair with your partner. I mean, just, uh, you know, I did say that it would have been interesting if the two of them wound up together. But if you think about every TV show where you had a male-female lead, once they got together, the show tanked. I mean, look at, um, oh, crap, Bruce Willis and Moonlighting. Uh, Moonlighting. Moonlighting. As soon as they got together, the show tanked. Remington Steel, once they hooked up, the show tanked. I mean, it's the only way it would work is if they did it in the series finale. If they got together and then just left at that and left it to the viewers' imagination. Otherwise, you have to go through seasons of this and that and more challenges, and it it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. But yeah, going back to Psych. Now that we know a little more Psych trivia, I want to get into a couple of my favorite episodes. Of course, the Spanish soap opera episode. Do you remember that one? No. Oh my God! You got to watch it. It's season two, and they get they go. See, I remember the the Spanish episode of Warehouse Thirteen, the okay. telenovela in Warehouse Thirteen. So, sorry. Yeah, this one is good because they crashed a set of a Spanish soap opera because Gus is obsessed with the Spanish soap opera, and one of the actors is accused of murder, of course. So they crash it, and they have to figure out who done it. That one and American Duos, those are two of my favorite ones. Yeah, another good one is the one uh, that had Freddie Prinze in it. It was their oh, geeky yeah. friend. And they des destroy that helmet from Battlestar Galactica. That made me want to cry. I mean, the sci-fi geek in me was like, what are you doing? You can't destroy that. <laughs> and then, of course, Freddie Prinze, the former nerd, has – Freddie Prinze Jr., rather, the former nerd – has a hot wife that he tries to be tough for, but it turns out she's even is an even bigger nerd than she, he is. He tries to to be like a jock type guy, liking football and stuff, and you know I know what that's like trying to do that, fake it. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> Yeah, but do you have any, because um, we are almost out of time, do you have any more last-minute guesses on what's going to happen in the movie? Um, now, see, I don't remember what happened to Juliet's father, played by the great William Shatner. William Shatner. Love him. Love him. Yes. But wouldn't it be nice if he came back? That would be epic because they are bringing back a ton of guest stars. They're bringing back the Karate Kid, Ralph Macchio. They're bringing back uh, Mary from the Yin Yang episodes. And I'm curious to see what they're going to do with that because last time we saw him, he was dead. So either they're going to have a soap opera ask him come back from the dead. He's going to be in a dream sequence, a ghost. You can't tell, but he's coming back. And Jimmy Simpson is a phenomenal actor. He knocked that whole Yin Yang series out of the park. So I'm happy about that. And I don't know, they seem to be having a ton of obscure guest stars from the show coming back. So I'm really excited to see who else is going to be there. 
I'd like to see the Shat. I think I'd like to see that. I would love to see William Shatner back, but anything William Shatner does turns to gold. So if he's there, we know, well, the movie's going to be True. anyway, but we know if William Shatner's there, it's going to be that much better. Now, one prediction I do have, yes. that this movie is going to do quite well, and that USA is going to bring it back again for another movie. That's what I think is going to happen, too. And I read an interview with one of the writers. Uh, I don't remember. I think it might have been Steve Franks or one, one of them said that they're planning to make it a Fast and Furious kind of deal where every year they come out with a movie. It'd be cool if they brought Vin Diesel in for an episode. <laughs> I would freak out. I would freak the heck out if Vin Diesel came. But he would have to play a bad guy because he just has that bad guy look. I would love to have Vin Diesel come back as some sort of villain. Well, you know, he's a big nerd anyway, so. Exactly. I'm surprised they never brought him back as a guest star on the show in the first go round. I mean, he would have been amazing. It would have been good. Yes. But we can't end the show without, well, it's a little bit sad for the both of us, without doing a dedication uh, in September 27, 2017, our great friend Terry Goldman, the reason for both of us are sitting here today, he unfortunately passed away, and he was a publicist slash social media guru for Psych. And James, you could agree with me, Terry was the most amazing guy. He was, and I, I was completely shocked when I heard of his passing. It was, I mean... A, Complete surprise. Yeah, I mean, I I called you right away. I got in touch with you right away. And I'm like, without him, none either one of us would have the jobs we have now. We wouldn't have been such close friends. And I owe my entire journalism career, 90% of my friendships I have in the field, all to Terry. Without him, I would have none of this. So, Terry, here is a crayon and flavored vodka just for you thank you for everything we love you so much cheers Terry. to Terry. and he's gonna be mine's so a gin and tonic by the way nice <laughs> i'm allergic to tonic water so i couldn't have that but i did do my his favorite drink was cranberry flavored vodka i didn't have the orange vodka but i had passion fruit passion fruit vodka i was able to add in there in his honor and what do you think he would think of the movie? I mean, I think he would be so pr he's going to be so proud of it. I I think he he would have been very impressed with it and he would have found a way to get on the set while they were filming it. Oh, absolutely. That would have made abs everything absolutely amazing for him and he would have been if I know Terry, he would be tweeting all the way through the movie and I know he's going to be tweeting from heaven tomorrow and oh god, I miss that guy so much. Thank you, Terry. And we are out of time. I want to thank James for being on. We'll both be on Friday night discussing the movie. I'm so excited to see what happens. And we are having a tweet along, tweet along on TV Unleashed tomorrow. Follow me at TV Unleashed 1. And we will be sending spoilers, fun snark, and everything you can think of about the movie. Sounds okay. good. Yeah, thank you so much for coming here, James. I really appreciate it. And tune in on- And I know I'm not as cute as Mandy, so. Oh, you're cute. In your, you're both cute in your own way. Come on, son. <laughs> <laughs> to quote Sean and Gus when Ed Lover was on. Come on, son. Anyway, <laughs> thank you, thank you for being on, and I will see you Friday. Yes, see you Friday. Thank you. Bye. Bye.